Just a little technical difficulty. It's called the mask was caught to the microphone. It's fine. It's all good. It's all good. Just have to adjust a few things here just for a minute. So I want to welcome you to Cornerstone Christian Fellowship. And I'm uh, Pastor Tracy. I'm the senior pastor here among many, many amazing pastors. And we want to welcome you today. And our purpose statement here at Cornerstone is loving God and loving others fearlessly. And oh, how that's needed in this world. So today is a um, Gratitude Sunday. And we're really looking at gratitude today and what that means, what that looks like, how we continue to be grateful in the midst of so many different things going on in the world. So where I want to start this morning is I want to start in a meditative practice of gratefulness. But first, I have to get my glasses. I'll be right back. So I just want us to find a comfortable position, whether you're standing or whether you're sitting. Both feet on the floor if you can. If you like to cross your legs, cross your legs. And just feel whatever you're standing on or whatever you're sitting on. Feel it holding your weight. And I want us to close our eyes. And I want us to breathe. Deep breaths in and out. And relax your body into whatever's holding you up. Another deep breath in and a deep breath out. And when you're ready, Bring to your mind somebody that you love. Somebody that you're so grateful for. Somebody. That makes your heart smile. And I want you to breathe that person in. Remember them. And breathe out and be thankful for them. And then I want you to silently repeat these phrases over them to that person as you breathe in, breathe out. May you be peaceful and happy. And breathe in who they are. And then breathe out. May you be safe from harm. And breathe them in again. And then breathe them out. May you be as healthy and strong as you can be. And then breathe them in again. everything you do. And then breathe them in one more time and thank God that they are or were a part of your life. And just sit in that beauty for a moment. And now I want you to take a moment and think about the room in which you're sitting and who you're with. And if you're alone, it's okay that it's just you. If you're with a crowd, just run your mind through everybody in that room. And take a moment and 
recognize the beauty of who they are. Recognize how much God loves them. And breathe them in. And if it's just you in the room, that's okay. Breathe you in. It's okay. It's perfect. And as you breathe everybody in, including yourself, breathe out, may you be peaceful and happy. And then breathe everybody in again. And breathe out, may you be safe from harm. Again, and breathe out. May you be as healthy and as strong as you can be. And breathe everybody in again, including yourself. And say, may you be blessed in all that you do. And now, this morning, let's enter into our gratefulness service, our thanksgiving service. And let's enter into worship together. And let's thank God for who God is. For all God has poured out over us. And that we can be so thankful this morning. Let's worship together. Thanking God for one another. Thanking God for God. And entering together. Let's praise him this morning, church. Oh, you've done. 
your love goes on and connects each one of us to you and to each other, that not one of us is untouched by your love. Thank you, Lord, for making us in your image. Thank you for drawing us out in your loving kindness and for drawing us close to you. We are grateful this morning for love like yours. Your love is devoted like a ring of solid gold, like a vow that is tested, like a covenant of Just 
what amazed me during that beginning meditation and what amazes me about gratitude is that whatever it's okay just 2020 don't be afraid kids we've been here all year it's almost over so as I was saying uh, it amazes me that when we have gratitude and when we purposely look at something we begin to realize what we have and what is instead of being overwhelmed by what may not be yeah. or what is not yeah. and we're able to see feel, and even cry a little of, wow, look what I have. So as we enter into this time of thanksgiving and of our tithes and offerings, you know, there's this constant command throughout the Bible, seek my face, turn your eyes towards me. So as we give today, we may be looking all around, seeing a lot of what is not. So I pray that as we give, we would look towards the one who has it all. Whether we can give a dollar or we can give $3,000, it doesn't matter. May we give knowing that as we put our eyes on Jesus, there's always enough. There's enough for this church. There's enough for each one of our lives. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much that just one simple act of shifting our gaze to you to what is shifts the moment thank you for this church this community for every member thank you for your abundance and your provision your care your understanding thank you for this tithe and this offering I pray your blessings over it as we give from our hearts as we give sacrificially. I pray you bless it and you bless every giver and everyone who can't give today. We just thank you so much for your kindness and your love and your care towards us. That with you, there's always enough. Thank you for taking care of this church and taking care of everyone else. In Jesus' name. We just thank you so much for your generous giving. If you need the ways to give, you can give online via those different options. Again, we just thank you so much. You know, usually, you know, when we're in a series, we continue on in the series, but we really felt this year we wanted to talk about gratitude and what it means to have gratitude in 2020 and gratefulness. Because I think when we hit moments that are so difficult, it's oftentimes so much harder to find that space of gratitude. And I, I, uh, 
I just think God is really smart. How many think God is like really smart? And I think of 1 Thessalonians that says this, and it's, this is in the Passion Translation. Let joy be your continual feast. Make your life a prayer. And in the midst of everything, be always giving thanks. For this is God's perfect plan for you in Christ Jesus. You know, God knows what we need. God knows God's own plan that they planted within us and gave us so that we could have abundant life here on earth. Not the kind of abundant life where we get everything we want, but the kind of abundant life that is in turn. The kind of abundant life that says no matter what is going on in my life, I can always find God and I can always rest in who God is. So in 2009, I was diagnosed with an adenoma. And, and what that is is a tiny little tumor that's on your pituitary gland. And being that it was on my pituitary gland, let me just say that it messes with your emotions. Big time. The seat of women's hormonal moves rest in the pituitary. Needless to say, um, there was a lot of ups and downs and ins and outs. And I lived for a long, long time in what I will call the abyss. That's what I labeled it. And I could see that things were happening that were wonderful and that were beautiful, but it never permeated my soul. I could see that like joyful things were happening, but it was like I was looking at it on a movie screen and it meant nothing to my heart. It just, it was like death. There was nothing. In between the dullness and the separateness that I feel, there was a deep darkness and a depression that I thought everybody was against me. I thought I was the victim of the universe. And I thought no one had as difficult or horrendous of a life as I had. And there was just a lot of darkness. On top of this, the medication that they gave me to shrink the tumor, which it did, and that I was going to be on for the rest of my life, also had mood altering effects. And I didn't learn this until I found a, 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 a self-help group that talked about this medication. And everybody talked about, I don't know what's worse, the tumor or the medication that I'm on. So both things were working in this um, abyss with me. And after years, years, I was laying in bed one night and I was like, I cannot do this anymore. Like, if this is my life, I don't want it. I don't want my life like, I, I don't want my life like this, God. Help me. <laughs> and what I heard was, it brought me hope, but when I tell people, they always are like, what? <laughs> but what I heard is God say to me, you are going to have this for the rest of your life. <laughs> what? Well, where is the God of healing? Where, where, what? And what I heard God say was, but I will show you how to overcome in spite of it. And I will be glorified through this. It's not about the tumor and the adenoma. I am bigger than both of those things. I am bigger than your meds and I am bigger than the adenoma. And God said, here are four things, five, that I want you to do. One of them, I can hear my earring clicking. One of them was I needed to tell people what I was going through. At this point, no one knew the abyss that I was in. They could see it, they could, my close friends could see it. And I even had very close friends look at me and go, do you even like me? 
Like, do you like hate me? You know, because it, there was just such a darkness within me. And then the second thing he said is you need to tell your pastor, Pastor Bob, you need to tell the elders, you need to tell your community, you need to tell people that are close with you, you need to ask them for help. And then he also told me, they told me, um, you need to check with those you trust before you trust what you're thinking. And that was one person and that was Tony. And so I would look at him and go, this is what I'm thinking. And he would go, you're skewed. And I, would, I had to learn to trust when he said that. You know that, okay. Some days he even came to me and said, don't leave the house today. <laughs> Cancel all your meetings. <laughs> You're really in a dark place. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, and then I read the book, A Thousand Gifts, in this time. And the Lord said, start a thankfulness journal. So since 2012, I have kept, this is my third thankfulness journal. And I am on 7,017. And to this day, I keep a thankfulness journal. When I first started the thankfulness journal, I had to do it every single day. The first thing I did when I woke up in the morning was I sat down and I wrote one to 10. And I would write 10 things. Sometimes it was I'm thankful for my dog. And I'm thankful for the sun. And I'm thankful for the chair that I'm sitting on. And every single day. Now, as all of these years have passed by, I may not do it um, all the time now, but I do it when I need it. I know when I need to pull my journal out and go, you got to start remembering what's good. The beautiful thing about this discipline since 2012 that I've been doing is I can also do it in moments where as I'm watching something unfurl before me that doesn't seem um, that is hard, I will run alongside of that something that is good. And I have trained my brain to go, okay, find, find the beauty right here. Find the beauty. And I'm going to talk about changing our neurotransmitters because in the depths of my soul, that is what I believe happened. And what the Lord said to me was you will find yourself one day on the other side of the abyss and you will find your joy again. And I can say in 2020, it is fully there. And I've not only found that, but layers. Is the adenoma still there? Yes. Am I still on the medication? Yes. Do I have joy? And have I, am I out of the abyss? Yes. Do I sometimes fall back in? You betcha. And what do I do? I go back to what I know to do. And I enter into gratitude. And I enter into finding the beauty in the midst. And going quiet. The other thing, and I'm showing you these to kind of help, help us learn together, is this little this little person is my other thankfulness journal. And the reason that it's another thankfulness journal is because it's more of a scrapbook and it's also my collage journal. So I will, sometimes I don't feel like writing. Wait, I'll hold it up for the camera. Sometimes I don't feel like writing. Sometimes I don't um, want to write the whatever. And so I keep this one beside me also. All of it is just a habit to retrain our brain. Because God knows what God is doing. God is very smart. So studies have shown that those who express the most positive emotions live about 10 years longer than those who express fewer emotions. Studies also show that positive emotions are linked with a broader thought action repertoire. What that means is that as we put positive emotions in us, it unlocks something that opens and widens our vista so we can see a little bit bigger and a little bit clearer. Also says, when people feel good, their thinking becomes more creative, integrative, flexible, and open to information 
and positive emotions enhance psychological and physical resilience. God is really smart. And it says that negative emotions are clearly physically harmful. Neuroscience tells us that for positivity to take effect, there has to be a three to one ratio. What that means is for every negative thought, occurrence, uh, relational interaction, um, happening, moment, there needs to be three positive counteractive things that we do think or move in. So what that means, and the reason for that, is we have this little thing in the back of our heads called our little amygdala. That is our fight or flight person. We needed it when we were hunting tigers and bears, and we need it when we're walking in the forest and suddenly something leaps out and starts chasing you. We need it when we're walking down dark alleys and somebody leaps out. We need it when, when we have to slam our, our you know, foot on the brake because we need our amygdala to react and respond fast and to fight or flight. We need that little guy back there. So what happens is when that little amygdala is triggered, it goes deeper into our psyches and deeper into our core. So what that means is if I'm walking down a dark alley and something frightening happens, the next time I'm about to walk, I go, I'm not going to go down that dark alley because danger is over there. So it hardwires into us a reaction and a response. It's like automatic. So in order for us to counteract our amygdala, it takes a three to one. And this is a scientific proven thing. This is, look it up. It is a three to one ratio. So when something happens, we have to replace it with three positive interactions or thoughts. So when we have a bad moment, I'm doing this because my husband is sitting over there. <laughs> I love you so much, honey. So when there's a bad moment, if I'm constantly harping and hanging on the bad moments that I'm having with my spouse, guess what's going to grow? But if I have a bad moment and I remind myself, this is but a moment, this is really who my spouse is. This is really who I know my partner to be. This is really why I love him. And it's almost a discipline that that we need to all get into, especially when it comes to relationships, is to remind us who, who the other person is. It also means that if you are dealing with something that is difficult or you are filled with anxious thoughts, you literally have to stop that anxious thought and go, what are three things right now? You will find, we will find, I found, that as I continuously replace these thoughts, I was actually building, this is also scientific proof, new neurotransmitters in my head. So when, and I'm going to read it in the Passion Translation, it says, Romans 12, 2, stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. It is truly you are rewiring, we are rewiring our neurotransmitter tracks and making something new. So my neurotransmitter tracks were going down a road like a rut of victimization, of sadness, of being in the abyss. And I began to build new neurotransmitters by a lot of hard work, a lot of hard work. And it they built. Now, sometimes it wants to default into those old things, but it's building another pathway. I remember being in Rome, and I've said this before, and I remember looking in when we were in a, in a archaeological dig kind of a place, and seeing ruts in the road, and they said these ruts are from the chariots from centuries ago. And I remember when I saw that, what came to me was be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I remember looking at those ruts 
And literally, you could see where they would be going around a corner, they would fall into the rut, and it was so deep, and that was centuries ago, and it was still there. We can transform, and we can get off of the highway of these ruts through gratefulness. Be thankful in everything. Let your joy be a continual feast. Make your life a prayer. And in the midst of everything, be always giving thanks. It's not that God is saying, do this because do it. It's that God is saying, do this and you will find life. God is saying, do this and you will find a different way of being. Now, I want to say this. I'm not saying that it will eradicate all depression of the world, but I am saying that mine was a physical manifestation of a physical thing that I had in my body and still do. It was a result of a medication that I was on and I still am. And God's words to me were true. I will be glorified through this and you can be joyful in spite of these things and it's the truth. So regardless of what we might have, what diagnosis we might have, there is a path to finding abundant life through the simple things of let your joy be a continual feast. Make your life a prayer and in the midst of everything, give thanks. And I'm gonna explain these things in a minute. And when I am looking at the world, we need this more now than ever. We need this more now than we ever have. And it's not that you look at these situations, but it's that you look at them and you go, yes, this is happening. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see the beauty here. Yes, this is going on. I'm going to find something over here. It doesn't even have to match it. It's just finding lovely things, finding things that we can be grateful for. So let me go into what these mean. So how do we do this? How do we live differently and think differently? The NIV in 1 Thessalonians says rejoice always. The Passion Translation says let your joy be a continual feast. I prefer the Passion Translation and I'll tell you why. So that Cairo, that word there, and it's really like, <laughs> but I can't say it like that. So I'm just going to say it like from Chicago. Hey, Cairo. <laughs> and it means to feel happiness or joy. See, when I read that and it says rejoice always, it feels like I got to conjure up some kind of happiness and joy. Like I got to do all the work here. But in the Passion Translation, where it says, let your joy be a continual feast, what that means to me is it's pulling up to a table, a table of joy that's already been laid for us. And it's sitting up and it says, let your joy feast on it. Feast on that which is already there within you. And the Gospel of John, John 15, where Jesus is telling his disciples, I am the vine and my father is the gardener. And he says, your job as my disciples is to abide in this vine. It's just to abide. It's to be and to know that you are a part of the vine. It is to rest and to breathe in that you are a part of this vine. And then when he gets to the end of explaining to them that he's the vine and their work is to abide and it's, it's, it's 1 through 11. And then he says, I've spoken these things to you and this is, in the, this is in the mirror translation. I have spoken these things to you so that my joy will continuously infuse you. And then he says, you don't have to invent your own if you can tap into mine. Come on. Our walk with Jesus is to abide. So let this joy be a continual feast. It is to quiet. It is to rest. If I could tell you how often my prayer time now, how often my quiet time is just me sitting quietly with God doing nothing. And just going, I'm going to breathe you in now. And I'm going to abide. 
and I'm going to let you pour, and I'm going to pour back, and we're just going to sit, and I'm not going to do it. It's the greatest breath that I can have. The second thing, as we abide and as we take this joy in as a continual feast, it says make your life a prayer. NIV once again makes it an action. He said, they say pray continuously, but I like TPT, make your life a prayer. And this is it. Recognize the sacredness of every moment of your life. It's that our very life is a prayer. It's not that I'm constantly talking to God. It's not that I'm constantly, you know, got something I want to say or ask for. It is that recognizing whether the moment is good or whether the moment is bad, it is a sacred moment. It is recognizing that we live our lives before God 24-7. That we are never away. And that what I do every day is a sacred prayer before God. Everything that we move. So it does matter how we live our lives. If I recognize that my life, my very life is a prayer, so that when I am sitting with somebody and talking, my life is a prayer together. So that when I am in the grocery store, my life is a prayer. So that when I'm driving by myself behind the car in front of me that is going one mile an hour and I want to get frustrated, my life is a prayer. It is living our lives before God in the sacredness. I have a favorite poet, Thich Nhat Hanh, and Sophia sent this to me yesterday and I loved it. And it says, the purpose of a rose is to be a rose. Your purpose is to be yourself. You don't have to run anywhere to become someone else. You are wonderful just as you are. Our life, the way we live our life, how we live our life matters. Make our lives a prayer in every moment. You know, I often think of a prayer as seed being planted. And the way that I move in this life is my seed being planted in this world? And is my prayer being planted? And so when I am moving in a negative, harsh, whatever way, I am planting those negative, harsh things. And, and I am learning in a deeper level that on those days, I just have to go quiet. On those days where I'm having a harder day, I just go, I just need to be alone. I need to get back into recognizing the sacredness, even of this moment, even in this difficult moment where I might be feeling like I'm having a difficult time, even there, recognize that there's a sacredness about that. And it is moving through this life, alert, awake, and thankful, recognizing that our lives are a prayer. See, I think oftentimes we move through this life blindly and we move through this life sloppy and we move through this life not recognizing the sacred of ourselves and the sacredness of others. I think that's one of the most um, saddest things that we do because I think there's more life than we realize. Even in moments of 2020 in the middle of a pandemic, there is life to be found, and there's life to be had. Um, St. John Vianney says, prayer is the inner bath of love into which the soul plunges. Let's breathe that in. Prayer is the inner bath of love into which the soul plunges. It's not supposed to be us. God, I want this and I want that. It is a communion. Julian of Norwich, the whole reason why we pray is to be united into the vision and contemplation of God to whom we pray. We pray to join. We pray recognizing the sacredness. We pray joining with who God is and listening. And finally, Telhar de Chardin, 
says, do not forget that the value and interest of life is not so much to do conspicuous things as to do ordinary things with the perception of their enormous value. It is to enter into the mundane and to recognize the sacredness of the mundane. And finally, in the midst of everything, be always giving thanks. And it's not giving thanks for everything. It is giving thanks in the midst of everything. Regardless if it's good or bad, that's our thinking. That's our dualistic thinking that we have to walk in and go good, bad, but in the midst of it all. And you know, I remember when my daughter was in ICU with a traumatic brain injury and she was in a semi-coma. And I remember standing there and it was just habit. I, was, I would look at her and then a nurse would come in and I would look at the nurse and go, thank God for you. And then she was in the number one um, brain injury center in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And I went, thank God for you. And it was the tragedy of what was going on, but it was recognizing and being grateful in the moment. And it wasn't because like I'm some spiritual foe, it had become a habit. It had become a habit. It's that simple. And then I would, would get overwhelmed and I would walk out and there was, um, there was these birds that would, would just surround the cafeteria that we were in outside. And if you went like this, they would stop and go silent. <laughs> right, hon? And so I would go out there and I'd go, as like a mode of entertainment, and then they'd go silent, and then I'd just stand there and watch them, and then they'd come back in, and I'd be like, <laughs> and then I'd go back upstairs. Not kidding. I know it sounds insane, but that's the truth. It was an amusing thing to do. But my point is, is that even in the most difficult moment, there is a place of some kind of beauty to be found. But we're trained to only focus in on the difficult moment. I am. And then if you have the background of me, where victim is like your, you know, go home to, you know, where you, you know, it, it's like your go to, then you got to doubly retrain your brain to go, no, there's something beautiful to be found in this moment. Everything is sacred. Find the sacred here. Find the sacred. And some days it is very hard. So this is what I want to say this morning to let joy be our continual feast. Pull up to the table, sit and eat, and abide with Jesus. Just quietly abide. Make our life a prayer. Recognize the sacredness of our life and what we do, even in the mundane. It matters, and it's sacred. Even if you're eating a bowl of cereal, Recognize the sacredness of eating, of sitting, of quiet. And in the midst of everything, always give thanks. No matter what is happening for every one negative, find three positive. Find three things that are beautiful. And then I love where it ends, for this is God's perfect plan for you in Christ Jesus. His perfect plan is that we live just like this. Finding God in every moment, just as Sophia said, is that if we stop for a moment, we will find the beauty. But we've got to be awake and alert and looking. So I'm going to have a couple of things I have to look. I'm going to turn on a thankfulness video here for a minute.
Hi, church family. It's Rashida here. I am thankful for my family because we are home more and more each and every day. I'm also thankful for my job because they are very flexible and I can work from home and I can go into the building. And I'm especially thankful for my church family to be able to see them when I host coffee and chats, well, Natalia and I, and also our Sunday school Zooms, one of my favorites. And when I just come to church on Sunday mornings to see the church family there, that is what I'm thankful for. Cornerstone family, Fran and Jim Donnelly here from the Jersey Shore Island Beach State Park. I hope you all had a blessed Thanksgiving and some time to relax with your families. We are thankful for our families and our friends. We're very thankful for God's creation. This ocean behind us. Let me see if I get the angle right. And we're thankful for each other. Hope you have a great holiday and hope to see you soon. Happy Thanksgiving. Church family, this year I'm thankful for my family, friends, and all the support that I've been receiving this year. Uh, 2020 has been such a crazy year for me and probably for all of you guys. Um, I'm thankful for receiving a new car from the car accident I was in this year. I am thankful for all the clothes and food that I continue to receive. And I am thankful for my team, my volleyball team. They are awesome. They're amazing. Um, I'm also thankful for still being able to get an education through Karen through Zoom and online, and I'm just thankful to be a part of this church. One thing I'm really thankful for is my father's record collection. When uh, my father collected all kinds of music, uh, jazz, world music, all of foreign language, um, as well as, you know, the things that we all know and love and uh, he put it all on a hard drive and uh, when he died that was one of the physical things he didn't have a lot of stuff but that was one of the physical things that he left behind um, right now i've got cannonball adderley in the background um, you know a lot of the jazz greats that um, not everybody has the opportunity to have in their home. Um, it's really a wonderful memory and that's one thing I'm grateful for. We're going to have a, a moment here where Dana is going to come up and she is going to read a book to us. It's called A New Alphabet for Humanity. Give her a hand. director here at Cornerstone, and um, Pastor Tracy and I had been talking a little while ago um, about this book I shared because a friend of mine, Rashida, recommended it to me, and um, it's a book that I've been really thankful for this year because um, all the words and definitions in this book are really, really special, and there are things that I want my kids to learn in this world that we're in right now. Um, I think we can use a new alphabet. So I wanted to read this to you this morning. So if you're at home, gather kids around um, on the couch, on the floor, wherever you're comfy. And we're also going to do a call and response. So when I say A is for abundance, I want you to say the word abundance back to me. Okay, so let's practice. A is for abundance. abundance. Very good. Okay. <laughs> so without further ado, this is a new alphabet for humanity. Um, it's written by Lisa McGregor and illustrated by Daniela Sosa. A is for abundance. Abundance is knowing there is enough for you and enough for me. The more I give to others, the more I receive. B is for bravery. bravery. Oh, I even forgot. <laughs> Bravery. 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 Nice. Bravery is having the courage to try new things. I am brave when I do something I've never done before. C 
C is for compassion. Compassion. Compassion is showing kindness and care to others. I have compassion when I help someone in need. D is for diversity. Diversity. Diversity is accepting people who are different from me. While we may be different on the outside, on the inside, we are all the same. E is for empathy. Empathy. Empathy is understanding how another person is feeling. I have empathy when I imagine myself in someone else's shoes. F is for forgiveness. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is letting go of hurt feelings when someone upsets me. Forgiveness is holding love in my heart instead. G is for gratitude. Gratitude. Gratitude is thinking about all the things that make me smile. I'm grateful when I give thanks for my day and for the people I love. H is for happiness. Happiness is feeling cheerful and excited. I am happy when I follow my heart and make time to play. I is for imagination. Imagination. Imagination is making a picture in my mind about what I would like to be. When I use my imagination, anything is possible. J is for joyful. Joyful. Joyful is a warm and happy feeling in my heart. I am joyful when I have fun doing what I love. K is for kind. Kind. Kind is being caring and helpful to others. I am kind when I do something nice to brighten someone's day. L is for loving. Loving. Loving is treating people with respect and gentle care. When I love myself, my love for others grows and grows. M is for mindful. Mindful. Mindful is noticing what is happening inside of me and around me. I am mindful when I take a moment to pause and breathe. N is for nurturing. Nurturing. Nurturing is caring for people in our big, beautiful world. I am nurturing when I show my love for the earth. O is for optimistic. Optimistic. Optimistic is always looking on the bright side of life. I am optimistic when I expect good things to happen. P is for peaceful. Peaceful. Peaceful is feeling calm inside and knowing all is well. Peace in the world begins with peace in my heart. Q is for quality. Quality. Quality is the time I spend with my family doing things together. Quality is also having good toys that last a long time. <laughs> R is for respectful. Respectful. Respectful is being kind to people and to nature. I am respectful when I take care of the world and the people around me. S is for sincere. Sincere. Sincere is being truthful and honest with others. I am sincere when I say something that comes from my heart. T is for thankful. Thankful. Thankful is appreciating all of the wonderful things in my life. I am thankful when I enjoy special moments with family and friends. U is for unity. Unity. Unity is knowing we are all connected to each other as one big human family. Together we can change the world. V is for vibrant. Vibrant. Vibrant is feeling happy and full of energy in my body. I am vibrant when I eat healthy food and spend time in nature. W is for wise. Wise. Wise is knowing the little things I do every day make a big difference. I am wise when I take time to learn and to grow. X is for exhale. Exhale. There's actually an E before X, but it's okay. <laughs> we'll let it go. <laughs> Exhale is the sound I make when I breathe in and let it out. When I take a deep breath and exhale, I feel calm and relaxed. Why is for yes. Yes. Yes is being open to new ideas and experiences. When I say yes, I discover the fun of new people and new places. Z is for Zen. Zen is feeling peaceful and relaxed. Yeah. I am Zen when I live in the present moment, the happiest place to be.
really cold in here. That's why I look like this now. So we have another thankfulness video, and we're also going to, after this, put a, a um, number up, and it's our Google number, and it's going to go to Sophia, and she is um, going to share what you're grateful for. So after this thankfulness, we'll put the number up, and then you can text it. Hi Cornerstone, Joanna Besky here, and this year I am just so thankful for God's healing hand on my body. Um, not only mine, but uh, several family members as well. I am thankful for his provision in so many different ways. And I'm thankful just for his presence and his promise that his mercies are new every morning. And we have hope. We are not a people without hope. We have hope because of Jesus Christ. Happy Thanksgiving. One thing I've been very thankful for during the pandemic is Matt and Steph Kistler's Bible study, which by the way, is open to anybody. Um, and it's a group of people that get together on Zoom every week um, or some remote platform. And we uh, read through a Bible passage and we take turns giving our ideas about it. It's a little more structured than that, but that's the basic idea. And one thing I like about it is that we have different perspectives, different thoughts, different experiences with the passage that we can share. And we don't have to all just agree or, you know, have the exact same perspective. Another thing I like about it is that it's orderly and we take turns so you know whose turn it is to talk, which as you know, can be an issue with remote events. And, um, you know, thirdly, it's because we've been meeting together since like, I don't know, April or May, it really has become a community where we've walked through different things with each other. Um, so I've just been very appreciative of that and of everybody who attends and participates. You're just awesome. I love the way you think. So we're going to put the number up on the screen. And while we're waiting for people to text, I want to just invite if anybody here in this room want to share something that you're grateful for today. Some of you shared earlier. Yeah, Sophia will come to you. Well, can you do both? Yeah. Okay, Sophia will come to you while she manages the phone and takes up the offering and does everything else. And sanitizes. Yes, and sanitizes. I am just reminded of um, <laughs> that everybody in the world is connected. That God made us that way. And, uh, you know, and I am really thankful for that. I'm thankful that I'm connected to people that maybe I see things completely opposite to them. And even though that hurts, I'm thankful for that connection. And I'm really thankful for um, my family and for uh, those who I walk closely with. I'm super thankful for that. Thankful for you too, Terry. So as was Tra Tracy was sharing about those birds, I thought about part of the sermon that came up. And uh, I remember the trauma of Danielle's injury and being there and all that stuff, but I didn't remember the birds until she told me that. So it, that really exemplifies of how much we need to think on the good things of life and the beauty of life and that type of thing. And uh, I'm grateful for that. And, to be able to hear that and know that and kind of just assimilate that, remind myself that I gotta, I gotta, I gotta soak in these things and keep them in the forefront, just, just to stay even with the trauma and the, and the difficulty in life. Um, 
And really when it comes down to it, there, I have so much I'm thankful for. And uh, most recently, my birthday, oh my gosh, a 60th birthday. So, yeah, yeah, so many of you uh, sent well wishes and video clips and cards and all that. And uh, the reason I'm grateful for my birthday is because it's my marker. Every Because I had a cardiac arrest, it basically was gone until they hit me with the paddles and revived me. And that was about five and a half years ago now. And uh, each birthday I count is an extra birthday, I guess. I don't know, it's my marker, so, and, and it was really special. Thank you all. I'm thankful for that too, hon. Yeah. Thank you. So I, got a couple, I got a couple here on the uh, feed. Brooke Christie, Christie says her church family. We love you, Brooke. And uh, Matt Rotman says, I'm so thankful for our church family and how they surrounded us during our sickness with COVID. Thank you very much. We love you, Matt and Rotman family. Uh, this random number says, I'm so grateful for the beautiful communities that I've been introduced to during this crazy year. I'm also grateful for my amazing boyfriend that has done everything with me and I've grown to love for the past 13 months. And that's from Leslie. <laughs> Look, I, heard, heard, I heard it and I, I knew who it was. It's so cute. And Pippa says, Good morning, church family. I am grateful for Cornerstone and for always having a home here. I'm grateful for the beauty of the Christian walk to openly share and display. This year has been so traumatic in my relationship, and this foundation has been so sustaining. Grateful. Thank you. We love you, Pippa. Love you, Pippa. <laughs> Good morning, church family, my beautiful church family. I'm thankful for waking up each and every morning. My family, grandkids, so thankful. My friends, everything around me from Juanita. Thanks, Juanita. We love you. Sweet. Natalia. She says, things might be lost, things taken away, but God remains with us. And I'm grateful for God's sweet whispers, my job, my family, CCF family, and the beauty of nature. Thankful for you, Natalia. Kristen Malandruco. Hey, Kristen. I'm grateful for my family and God's provisions. I'm so thankful for a new job that starts tomorrow. Yay! Woo -hoo -hoo! And I'm thankful for my church family. We're grateful for you guys, too. We miss you and love you. Stuart Tatum. He says, I'm grateful for fall sunshine and temperatures. Yes. Yeah. Grateful for you, Stuart, and your family and your pictures. It's good. Anyone else in the building? <laughs> I'm grateful for um, the facility that I work at. You know, we have 163 beds. And we haven't experienced any serious outbreak of COVID. Um, every one of our sister facilities have experienced outbreaks. And so far, we've been very, very blessed um, that no one is, you know, we have just haven't had a big outbreak of COVID. So I'm, I don't know how long it's going to last, but I'm grateful for every day that we go through and that we don't have it. So. Grateful for that. That's amazing. And grateful for you. Let's give it up for Joe. <laughs> We're so glad he's here. All right, so this is what I want us to do at home. I just want you to take five minutes. No, 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 that's way too long. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. And I want you to share with one another what you're grateful for. And if you're by yourself, that's okay. Put it in the put it in the little comment feed. If you're with other people, just in a quick word, what you're thankful for. What you're grateful for. And I want everybody in this room, just take a look at the closest person to you and just tell them in a word what you're grateful for.
You know, I was thinking this morning that we are 10 months, seven months, eight months into this COVID. And I was thinking the team of people that the Lord has within this community, the elder team, amazing. I got to cry, staff, amazing. The interns, remarkable. The leaders here that serve relentlessly behind the scenes. People that God has brought us during COVID. Miles and Leslie and Carol and Dawn and, and uh, I think of Mario who came right before that. And, and who else am I forgetting? Michael. Michael who came to prepare and get us ready for uh, what we're doing right now. All the behind the scenes and the knowledge and the sacrifice and Joni and Dana working to get all this equipment set up and so many people, so many people, the people that you don't see that are, it's like some sort of a thing going on back there that nobody ever sees that, you know, Kathy learning new stuff. It, it's amazing, the worship leaders that continue to come in. We're here. This is good. We remain because God remains. It's so good. So let's close out together and let's worship with everything we got for who God is. And then I'll come back up for the benediction.
So here's our assignment. Start a journal. Wake up, at least this week. First thing, write down. Don't put it on Facebook. Don't announce it to the world. Just you and God, alone, quiet. And then just rest your hand on those things and breathe them in and breathe them through you and make them a prayer. Not through words, just through embracing them. Do that this week. I'm going to give an announcement and then I'm going to close out. I don't have my glasses. So we have Free Soup Friday starting this Friday. And it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a drive through pickup. So you can drive through, pick up your soup. If you really want to be around people, pull into a parking place and just eat your soup in your car while you're waving at people. Second thing is we started a small business page and it's on the CCF website. So if you are a person who has a small business, you are still welcome to contact us and put it on the page. If you are um, a person who's shopping for Christmas, look at our small business page, support our people. And we also have Tuesday night prayer at seven o'clock via Zoom and um, contact our office for the uh, link. So let's stand. And I want to close out with our text, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Let joy be our continual feast. Pull up to the table, abide, rest, and feast. Make our life a prayer. Recognize the sacredness of your life, of my life, of the life of the other. And that everything that you do, that we do, is sacred. We have something to bring this world in exactly who we are. And in the midst of everything, always give thanks. No matter what is happening for every one negative, Find three positive. Practice that. Because this is God's perfect plan for each one of us. That there is a place of abundance, no matter the circumstance that we might be in. God has a way in every season for life. God bless everyone.